Hello everyone, if you're watching this video right now, I, su I suppose you're an IB student graduating in May 2019 and you're confused about how to write your TOK essay, okay? Because your teacher don't give you enough instructions and you're really confused, you don't understand it. So today I'm going to share with you the level 7 approach, a guaranteed level 7 approach to write your TOK essay, okay? And I have developed this approach with TOK experts at HKXL who got an A before. So this is guaranteed to work. So what I will do is I'll teach you the general approach about how to structure the essay, how to write the essay, and then I'll use one of the props as, as an example to show you how to write the essay. Okay, so let's get straight into it. Okay, now before we start, let's let us look at the rubric. Okay, so there are two main components in the rubric. First is understanding of knowledge questions. What this means is that your essay needs to be focused on answering knowledge questions related to your essay prompt. What's a knowledge question? A lot of students don't even know what a knowledge question is. Well, a knowledge question is basically also known as a knowledge problem. It's essentially um, a problem related to how knowledge is obtained and how we know something. Okay, we'll look at some examples later to help you to understand it. Okay, and then you need to answer your knowledge questions and you need to link it effectively to different areas of knowledge and ways of knowing. So you need to know what are areas of knowledge and what are ways of knowing. Later, we'll look further into that. Okay, <clears throat> now, and then the next part is basically how well your, your essay is written, whether your essay is persuasive, whether there are real life examples, whether there's effective evaluation. So now the, the first thing we will do is I'll explain to you what are knowledge questions and how you can use knowledge questions in your essay. And then we will look at uh, area, what are areas of knowledge, what are ways of knowing. And then we're going to go straight into an essay and I'll show you how to write a level seven essay. Okay. So as we have seen in the rubric just now, in your TOK essay, you basically need to answer knowledge questions related to the essay prompt, okay? Number one, your essay needs to be focused on answering knowledge questions. You need to come, essentially what that means is you need to come up with knowledge questions, two knowledge questions to address the knowledge, the, the essay prompt, and you need to answer those um, knowledge questions yourself, okay? <clears throat> And your knowledge questions need to be related to areas of knowing and uh, area, ways of knowing and the areas of knowledge, okay? So now, before we, that's why before we start, it's very important for you to understand what are knowledge questions, okay? So knowledge question is essentially also called knowledge problem. It's an issue related to how we know and what we know. It's a question, not, it's, so it's normally a knowledge question starts with how and to what extent, okay? <clears throat> so how do we know something? And and what we know, that sort of thing. Okay, so what are, I'll give you some examples of knowledge questions. For example, to what extent does emotion play a role in the obtainment of knowledge in the natural sciences? Okay, so how does emotion help us to get knowledge in the natural sciences? That would be uh, an example of a knowledge problem, okay? Or another example would be like, to what extent does ethics play a role in the obtainment of knowledge in, in the languages? That sort of thing. Okay. Now, what are areas of knowledge? Areas of knowledge is, are essentially the subject areas. So basically, your your um, in your TOK essay, you need to write about different subject areas. Okay, which are the areas of knowledge, like mathematics, natural sciences, human sciences, that sort of thing. Now, <clears throat> ways of knowing. Ways of knowing are basically ways that we can know something. Ways that we can know. We can perceive and obtain knowledge. So for example, we can know, we can uh, obtain knowledge through language, through emotion, through reasoning, through imagination. These are all ways that people, these are ways that people can obtain knowledge. Okay, so if you're still not sure, I suggest you to, uh, these are just hard facts. So you can go to your um, TOK uh, textbook and you can, there will be detailed explanations there. Okay, but essentially, um, Hopefully, you, at least you get an idea about what knowledge questions are, okay? And the ways of knowing and areas of knowledge. Now, let us look at a specific, another question that is from the uh, TOK May 2019 prompt, okay? Um, so yeah, for this particular question, we're going to look, I'm going to go through with you the entire essay outline, okay? So we'll walk through together the entire essay outline and you'll see how to write a level 7 TOK essay. You can use this outline if you want. Of course, don't copy it completely, but you can use it to, as, as like your foundation, okay? So 
the quality so the prompt is to the quality of knowledge is best measured by how many people accept it discuss this claim with reference to two areas of knowledge okay so the first step as i said we need to develop knowledge questions so what knowledge questions do we answer to in response to this prompt the first one is quite simple to to what extent is the quality of knowledge determined by how many people accept it so basically we're just directly answering the the essay prompt okay so to what extent is the quality of knowledge determined by how many people accept it now second knowledge question so because the questions that the essay prompt says the quality of knowledge is best measured by how many people accept it right so it's the question is kind of about how do we measure the quality of knowledge okay so we can another knowledge question we can come up with is to to what extent is the sorry how do different ways of knowing measure the quality of knowledge so there are different ways of knowing okay so how do people uh, measure the quality of knowledge in different ways of knowing okay so for example in if the way of knowing is language how do we measure knowledge when our way of knowing is language or for logic how do we measure the quality of knowledge when we use logic that sort of thing okay so now let's go to how we write about the essay so the first paragraph is introduction so what do we do in our, in our, in our introduction first we introduce our knowledge question okay and then we we basically contextualize the question so we explain what the question is really talking about okay and then we can define the terms okay so for this question we can say okay so in this essay we're going to respond to the knowledge to the essay prompt to what extent is the quality of knowledge best measured by how many people accept it so, okay so just introduce the question then you can contextualize the premise of the of the question okay so basically you can say the point here is that not every idea argument or opinion or belief is knowledge and therefore we need to be able to differentiate between quality we need to differentiate knowledge based on quality okay so quality uh, can be defined as the extent to which knowledge is true okay and <clears throat> so in your essay you would write something like um, so not every idea or opinion is knowledge and therefore there is a need to to differentiate uh, propositions by quality okay so there is a quality difference between well-justified knowledge and other propositions that are not justified. And knowledge can be defined as a tr justified true belief, according to P Plato. Okay, <clears throat> So the quality of a knowledge is to what extent it is true, to what extent it is valid, to what extent it is justified. Okay, So the accuracy and the validity of a knowledge is, is how we can... Um, is essentially what it means by the quality of knowledge. First body paragraph we will talk about the first uh, knowledge question so we, you can introduce your first knowledge question so you can say the first knowledge question we will explore is to what extent is the quality of knowledge best measured by how many people accept it and then you can state your argument so first we'll write one paragraph for and one paragraph against so the paragraph four we can say in some cases the quality of knowledge is best measured by how many people accept it now we can go into different examples right so I'll give you several examples here so the first example is that in the natural sciences and in the human sciences, um, peer review is often the the academic standard. So the quality of a of a paper written by a professor or a new research by a professor is often evaluated based on how many people accept it. So the point here, you can what what you can say is that um, this is in fact an efficient manner for the scientific community in the short term to evaluate the quality. Of knowledge right and the more people that the more scientists who accept uh, a new research paper the more likely that it is correct right now another example you know in, in, in on courts um, a testimonial is more justified if more people share the same knowledge so for example if more people witness the crime occurring it is more likely that the crime did occur for example it, a murder if more more people witness the more murderer in the same location in the exact same time performing the act of murdering um, it is more likely that the that the piece of knowledge is true right um, and again this is a very reasonable and logical way to evaluate the quality of knowledge and it's used in all courts around the world right and another example a close example is that 
um, if the more because on courts there are juries making decisions right if the more more juries agree to a decision the more likely that it is justified so if more for example if more of the juries believe that the um, the crime is is in fact being convicted the more the more likely that the crime did in fact occur and um, if the more justified uh, the decision would be right because it would suggest so in other words if more people because it suggests that more people that it suggests that the reasoning process and the ethical standard is agreed amongst more juries that's why it's it's considered to be more justified and in all courts around the world um, decisions are made by juries based on uh, only if a, a large majority of the juries agree to a certain decision you can do more research on this for spe specific examples for example in Hong Kong I believe if if the proportion is seven, it needs to be seven to two. Then, then, um, then the decisions would be made, right? And then the next example is um, in businesses. It, if a business wants to make a business decision, there needs to be a majority vote from the board of directors. So, for example, if there if there's a major change in in the uh, in the business's management. There needs to be a vote from the company's board of directors, right? And the decision can only be made if the majority agrees to it. The assumption here is that if more people support the change, then it's more likely that the change is justified. It's more likely that the change would be beneficial to the company because it would suggest that more people um, agree to the reasoning, right? Now, Next, in the human sciences, another example. In the human sciences, uh, you know, we know that models, polls, and questionnaires are used to create knowledge. In a democratic society, um, laws can only be passed if the majority accept it. Like, for example, in, in, in Hong Kong, the Legislative Council, only if, if a majority of the members in the Legislative Council accept a, a, a law to be passed, then it can be passed, right? So the, the, the logic behind this is that the more pe if the more people accept the law to be justified, it is more likely that it's justified, right? Um, because it is co coherent to the ethical standard of more individuals. It, and it's more likely for the law to be justified. And, and, and arguably, this is the best way to measure the quality of knowledge because if the more people accept a piece of law, it is more likely that... It, the more more people accept the law, obviously, and then um, there this would help to promote social stability because if the law is widely accepted, then people agree to the law, and there there will be more social stability. On the other hand, if a law is not accepted by a majority, it would create social unrest. It can potentially create social unrest, right? Okay, so so these are some examples of the arguments for that you can use uh, for the claim. Or counterclaim. So just now we said that uh, quality of knowledge is best measured by how many people accept it, right? But the counterclaim is that the number of people accepting a knowledge is a symptom of the extent of justification of that knowledge. So if more people accept it, it's more likely that it is justified. However, the fact that more people accept it does not inherently determine the quality of knowledge. So there are a lot of times where a lot of there are many. There, there are many examples of knowledge that are accepted by many people but are in fact unjustified and, and are proven to be untrue later on okay so you can you, you can find a lot of scientific examples here right um, because there are a lot of scientific theories that used to be widely accepted that are later disproved by empirical data right um, so one example here is the germ theory. I'll talk about this first. The germ theory. So the germ theory was proposed by a by a scientist in the Victorian era. You can do more research on this, and you definitely find a lot of information. But I'll give you a brief idea here. So the germ theory was proposed by a scientist long ago, uh, but in the Victorian era in in the UK. However, at that time, this the germ theory initially was not widely accepted. The the society at large did not believe in bacteria. They not, did not believe in germs. They simply believed that diseases were caused by 
ill fate, like bad, bad luck or, um, or bad genetics, but they did not believe that germs or bacteria existed. And therefore, at that time, medical processes was done without hygienic processes, with very, without proper hygienic processes. In other words, it's very, um, very little attention was pay paid to hygiene in, in, even during a surgery at that time, right? Now you, we know that because, because we understand that there's bacteria and there are germs, um, hygiene became very important in medical processes, right? But at that time, people did not know. It was only later when microscopes were, were invented that we were, that humans were able to see bacteria and it was able to prove that bacteria and germs did in fact exist. So we can see how a widely accepted piece of knowledge um, can be untrue, right? Okay, another example is um, we extend from the example above when we talk about board of directors. So in board of director elections, just now we said that it, it is an efficient way for businesses to make decisions, right? And it's used in many in businesses around the world. However, we can argue here that emotion is often used as a way of knowing for board of director to make decisions, right? So when emotion is used as a way of knowing, the quality of knowledge is evaluated based on personal values and based on personal experiences. So emotion play a role in these board of directors' decision. And their decisions, therefore, might be biased and may not necessarily be in the business's best interest, right? So this is... Yeah. Another example is that in democratic elections to pass a bill, um, e again, emotion is used as a way of knowing by the electors. So again, the electors might have personal bias and therefore arguably unjust laws can be passed, right? So for example, homosexuality was considered unlawful in the past. Now you can do more research on this um, about when was homosexuality considered unlawful or was the law. You, you should do more research on this, but it was considered unlawful and now it is considered to be lawful. Now it is not, it is legal to be homosexual, right? So this shows how only because many people accept a law, it does not mean that, it does not necessarily mean that the law is ethical. It does not mean that the law is justified, right? So unju because unjust laws can be passed even when many people accept it, it's possible. Next, so we want to explore the second knowledge question because we have finished exploring the first one. So we can tie it in. So we can say, while uh, the number of people accepting a piece of knowledge is a way to measure the quality of knowledge, when people use different ways of knowing, they can evaluate. They also evaluate the quality of knowledge in different ways, right? So this leads us leads to the second way the second knowledge question which is how do people measure the quality of knowledge in different when they use different ways of knowing okay so basically the first claim we can pick a way of knowing and to explore that so let's say we pick emotion okay we'll use emotion here so we say emotion when people use emotion as the way of knowing they determine the quality of knowledge based on their personal values priorities reactions and their um their past experiences basically, right? So we now we come up with some examples of how people evaluate knowledge, the quality of knowledge when they use emotion as a way of knowing. And we evaluate whether that's good or bad. Okay, so for example, you know in, in uh, literature, people use emotion as a way of knowing, right? So individuals determine the justification of information in novels or readings largely based on how emotionally invested they get, right? Based on their personal values and their and their personal experiences, right? That your interpretation of a novel can be different from mine based on our different personal experiences and values. Okay? If if what people read do not correspond to their personal value, it would be hard to accept such information as knowledge. So it so the more that the knowledge in literature synchronizes with people's personal values, the more that they're likely to accept the information as knowledge, right? So in other words, there can only be meaning, meaningful representation when people use emotion as a way of knowing. Only when they get emotionally invested, they can, um, there can be meaningful representation from reading literature. 
So therefore, um, emotion is an effective way of eval knowing when in uh, for literature, and it's also um, uh, using personal values uh, to evaluate the quality of knowledge in literature is also an effective way to measure the quality of knowledge for individuals. For example we can use is history. So the point here is that people often evaluate the quality of knowledge in history based off of their personal values. So for example Chinese people are more likely to accept that Nanjing massacre to be a correct representation of history because they are the victims, right? Chinese people are the victims, whereas Ch Japanese people are more likely not to accept the Nanjing massacre to be a quality piece of knowledge. They're not less likely to, to uh, accept the interpretation that the Nanjing incident was in fact a massacre, right? So this is based on, this is because of the difference in their personal values between the and the personal experiences of the and the and their priorities as Japanese and as Chinese. So we can argue here that this may not be the best way of evalu evaluating the quality of knowledge in um, in history it because it can lead to biased and inaccurate interpretation, right? If if so ideally the interpretation should not be based off of um, based off of uh, personal values, mm, right? Mm. Because that can lead to biased interpretation. We can talk about another way of knowing, right? So we can say, when language, we can talk. Let's say we talk about language. So when language is used as a way of knowing, formality and diction of information influences how people perceive its quality. So if it's uh, written in it, normally, if 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 it's written, if the language is more um, guided, carefully guided, and more formal it tends to be an indication that the knowledge is produced in a rigorous manner, right? So for example, in, 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 uh, in lab reports or in scientific research papers, these papers need to be written in a very formal manner and needs to be written in a very, in a very guided manner. So there needs to be proper citation, etc. And because this reflects, and this reflects on um, this would affect how people interpret its quality, how people measure its quality. The more carefully guided it is, the more so that people would would feel that would perceive the the knowledge to be well justified, right? So, so is this a good way of knowing? So I would say no, because there is a correlation between the quality knowledge, the quality of knowledge, and the language used. However. Using language as a way of knowing and the formality and diction of information to evaluate the quality of knowledge is a superficial way. So just because something is written in a very formal manner does not mean that it is necessarily well justified. In fact, well justified knowledge can be pre presented in, in an informal way. So for example, like Bill Nye the science guy. You know, Bill, you probably know who Bill Nye is, right? So, um... In, in Bill, Bill Nye's show, scientific knowledge is being represented in a very informal way, although those scientific knowledge is often well justified, right? And it's well proven with empirical data, right? So now we'll make our conclusions. So in your conclusion, you want to regurgitate your claims and your counterclaims, right? Um, and then you, should, you could state a conclusion to really wrap up the whole thing and to answer the essay prompt. So if, um, if I were writing the essay, I, this is just a suggested conclusion. I would say that for practical reasons, um, from society's point of view, judging the quality of knowledge based on how many people accept it is often the best and most efficient way, as there, as there often lacks a better way to determine whether a piece of knowledge is true. So, for example, if whether a law is just or unjust, it's very, it, it's, there's no an objective standard to it. So, therefore... Um, judging the quality of knowledge based on how many people accept it is an efficient and the and it can be considered the best way, right? Like another example is academic peer reviews, right? Although we know that uh, just because peer reviews support a certain scientific paper does not mean that the scientific paper is absolutely correct, but it is 
the best, one of the most efficient and the cost effective way to evaluate the, the quality of knowledge. And there may not be better alternatives for that, right? But however, we should also keep in mind that just because people accepted a certain piece of knowledge does not necessarily mean that it's, it's, it's totally justified. Often false claims that are widely accepted can be false, uh, right? So, for example, in the natural sciences, empirical data is a stronger determinant of quality of knowledge and can often refute theories that were once considered to be true, right? So, and we can also tie, how about the different ways of knowing? So we can say that on a more personal level, when people use different ways of knowing, they, in, they in, inevitably measure the quality of knowledge based on their different way of knowing, right? And it, it the best way to measure the quality of knowledge ultimately depends on the context, okay? Okay, so thanks a lot for watching this video. You can download our essay outline in the description below so you can have a, have a guide to follow for your TOK essay to help you to get a level seven. And if you want any help in any IB subject, feel free to register the link below for a free trial lesson. Okay, so I hope to see you guys very soon and goodbye for now.